My name is Abby Nelson and we own Five Star Land and Livestock. And my good dear friend Kathy Echevarria and I have written books, the Five Star Children's Book Series. And today we are going to be reading the Rodeo, which is our book three. Kathy and I developed these stories from walking and talking about childhood memories and my experiences with cattle and horses. And Kathy was raised in the rainforest in Central America and her dad was a mining engineer and they were a little bit isolated and her dad developed stories using the critters that are used in our children's books. And so we have Beatrice the butterfly who's an opera singer. We have Letitia Ladybug who's a single mother of five. Peter, Peter Potato Bug who is a little bit isolated from the world and needs a little help from his friends. And there are many other characters in the different books that are fun. In the live animal section, there is Oscar, the big Angus bull, and Dolly. There's their daughter, Vivi, who is a very precocious young lady that loves to wear her boots. And so we've developed these stories in wanting to have, our goal was to have children living in the city have an experience of agriculture and ranching in their life through these books. So I hope you enjoy them. I hope that you can entertain your children and if you have any questions, why please get in touch with us. We will list uh, contact, email, and information for you. Please enjoy. Today we're reading The Rodeo. This book is written by Kathy Etcheria and Abby Nelson, illustrations by Linda Rosser. Peter Potato Bug loves this life. He is especially happy on sunny days that have a light breeze so he can fly his kites. He has a special area where he lives in the big tree, Wilton, on the Five Star Ranch. His home is near the top for Peter to fly his kites. Peter has several kites, mostly made from shiny balloons which have lost their air and dropped to the ground. Today, Peter has chosen the bright blue kite to fly on the highest branches. As the day gets warmer, Peter gets tired and climbs down the tree. He is thirsty and heads across the pasture toward the creek for a drink of water. It is a short walking distance, but for Peter it takes a while. He walks along with his kite that can barely be seen above the grass. Suddenly he bumps into something tall. He raises his head and discovers that it is Big Red, the handsome stallion. Peter is so tired that he has forgotten how thirsty he is and climbs up the horse's leg. He finds a spot on his neck and nestles into his mane and quickly falls asleep. Little does Peter know that today is the rodeo and Ryan is coming to catch Big Red. Ryan is entered in the team roping with his favorite partner, Zach. Team roping is a rodeo event where one cowboy ropes the horns of the roping steer and the other cowboy ropes the hind legs. Cowboys use team roping on the ranches to catch cattle that need attention if they are sick. Today, team roping is an event at rodeos that is timed, and the fastest time wins the money. Ryan and Zach often win this competition, and each rides a very nice horse. Big Red is the fastest and most athletic of all the horses at the rodeo. Ryan has the truck and trailer ready to go. He checks to make sure he has everything in the tack compartment the roping saddle, saddle pads, Big Red's special roping bridle, and protective boots for Big Red's legs. He checks to make sure that there are ropes, feed, and a bucket for water. Ike is very excited because he knows how much fun the rodeos are. Many of Ryan's friends have dogs that travel with them that Ike likes to play with. Ike is bouncing beside Ryan, even picking up the end of Big Red's lead rope, thinking he is helping to lead the horse. The pickup and horse trailer are checked to make sure they are properly hitched. The brakes and lights are in working order and Big Red and Ike are loaded. Ryan loads Big Red in the trailer, not knowing that Peter is still taking a nap in Big Red's mane. Ryan drives down the ranch driveway and turns onto the main road. He is left with plenty of time to spare, allowing for parking and unloading Big Red and for getting him saddled. But then, all of a sudden, a car turns into the highway just in front of Ryan. He slams on his brakes to keep from hitting the car. Ike is thrown on the floor, and there is movement in the trailer. 
Ryan pulls over as soon as he can find a safe place and parks the truck. He hurries around to the back of the trailer and opens the door. Big Red is stamping his feet with a wild look in his eyes. Ryan steps into the trailer and runs his hand over Big Red's back and legs to make sure he is okay. Ryan talks in a low voice to calm the big horse. It's okay, Big Red, you're going to be fine. After making sure everything is all right, Ryan gets back in the truck and heads on to the rodeo. Peter just crawls in closer and enjoying his nap. Lots of trucks and trailers are already parked at the rodeo ground. Ryan finds a spot next to Zach's rig. Zach's horse is saddled and ready to go. Ryan thinks that he is late because of the near accident. Big Red gets a quick brushing, then the blanket and saddle are put on. Ryan straps the protective boots on Big Red's legs and grabs his ropes. Ike runs alongside. He knows he must stay outside the rope and arena when the competition begins. They all ride to the arena to get off their horses and warm up for the competition. Zach rides over and tells Ryan that there is plenty of time as the veterinarian is making sure all the radio stock are in good health and plenty of feed and fresh water in their pens. The veterinarian notes that the roping cattle have proper horn wraps that will protect their horns while roping. Peter hears the commotion around the rodeo. The announcer is calling names of contestants so they may enter the arena when it is their turn to rope. Peter had felt that the saddle blanket and saddle being placed on Big Red's back and he now remembers how thirsty he is. Peter is just starting to climb back down the big horse's leg when the announcer calls Ryan and Zach to take their places at the rope and shoot. It is their turn for the competition. Ryan waits for Big Red to settle into the position and glances at Zach to make sure he is ready. Zach nods to Ryan, and Ryan nods to the man operating the rope and shoot to release the steer. Big Red takes off like a streak of lightning, and Peter holds on for dear life. When Ryan catches the horn and starts to pull the steer to the left, Peter almost goes flying to the ground. Peter grabs one wisp of hair on Big Red's mane as the last second and holds on tight. Zack swings his rope and catches the steer's hind legs, and Ryan turns Big Red to face Zack. Peter nearly falls off the other way. He is so dizzy he can barely open his eyes, and his favorite blue kite has fallen to the ground. Ike is waiting at the gate for Ryan to leave the arena. He sees a shiny blue object lying in the dirt and instantly realizes that it's Peter's favorite blue kite. Ike's ears go up and he now knows that Peter must be somewhere nearby. Did Peter fall off in the arena? Ryan and Zach are receiving cheers and clapping from the fans in the rodeo stand, but one voice stands out. Way to go, Ryan, she says. Who is that? asks Zach. Ryan turns in his saddle and sees a pretty blonde. That's Haley. She teaches at our elementary school and she brought her class out last week for a ranch tour. Ike runs through the gate into the rodeo arena. Ryan looks back and calls his dog. Ike has never disobeyed before and Ryan shouts, Ike! The announcer on the microphone shouts that someone has a black and white dog in the arena. Ike is running to get the shiny blue kite and to try to find Peter. His nose is in the air searching for a scent of the potato bug. Running as fast as he can, Ike grabs the kite and scurries out the gate. Ike follows Ryan and Big Red to the trailer. Ike, it's against the rules to have dogs in the arena. Bad dog, scolds Ryan. Ryan throws his leg over the saddle and steps down, rubbing Big Red's neck. They are standing close to the truck and Ike jumps in the back so he can get a better look. Ryan is taking Big Red's bridle off and putting his halter back on to tie him to the trailer. He unsaddles Big Red and all the while Ike is watching for Peter. Ike calls out, Peter, can you hear me? Peter, Peter, are you there? Can you hear me, Peter? And a very faint reply comes from the little potato bug. I'm up here. I'm so thirsty, I need a drink of water. Ike says, climb to Big Red's head and jump on my back. I'll get you to the water bucket. So Peter shakes himself awake, makes his way to the very top of the horse's head, and slides down Big Red's nose and lands on Ike's back. Ike carries Peter over to Big Red's water bucket and lowers his head so Peter can get a drink. For such a little bug, he drinks a lot of water. Peter hangs on tight to Ike as the dog jumps off the back of the truck and into the back seat. 
Ryan loads Big Red into the trailer and he checks the hitch and doors for safety before climbing in and starting the truck. Just as Ryan starts to pull out of the radio grounds, Zach comes running up with a check and belt buckle. They had won the team roping. Ike is stretched out on the seat ready to take a nap. He is so tired from everything that has happened and so thankful that Peter is okay. However, Peter is very excited. After all, he has stepped for most of the day and he is no longer thirsty after that big drink of water. Peter talks and talks of hearing the radio announcer and of nearly falling off a big red three times. He tells Ike how sad he is that he lost his kite. Ike opens his eyes remembering that he has the kite. Ike reaches deep in his hair coat with his teeth and pulls out the beautiful blue kite. Peter is now more excited than ever. Ryan turns to the ranch's driveway and Bumblebee B is buzzing around the truck. He sees Ike and Bumble tells him that Peter is missing and all the critters are worried. Ike says, Peter's with me. And as soon as we unload Big Red and turn him loose, I will bring Peter over to the tree. Please gather everyone around Wilton. Peter has a great story to tell. Bumble races back over to the tree. Beatrice has just finished getting her new formal dress on. Letitia is feeding her five children. Jerry is thinking on the rose bush, and the ant army is practicing drills on the highest branch of the tree. Bumble calls them all in and then flies over to get Oscar, Dolly, and Vivi. Vee Vee. Just as Ike promised, he runs over to the big tree with Peter and perches on the stage. Peter is sitting there with a big smile on his face and the blue kite flying above him. Everyone is asking where he has been and how he's doing. Peter says, it all started this morning when I got thirsty and was walking to the creek and ran into Big Red. The end.